So it's Friday and I am on my way to Scotland. I'm spending the next 11 days uh, volunteering at the Cape Wrath Ultra, which is organised by Ure Events. So I'll be up in Fort William and then travelling all the way up from Fort William to the top of Scotland via Ullapool, all the way through the West Highlands. It's going to be an absolutely amazing adventure. I'm going to take you along with me right now. I'm at Stevenage railway station waiting to get the train up to Edinburgh. I'm very excited by the speed of these trains. The Cape Wrath Ultra has been a bucket list race of mine for a number of years. Being on the event team was going to be awesome. This is the very famous St George's Square in Glasgow. Haven't got long here, going to get the train up to Fort William from Glasgow Central, which is just there any second now. Gonna get to Fort William at about 10 o'clock tonight. It'll probably be dark and I'll have to set up my tent in a field somewhere. The further north I travelled into Scotland, the more remote and mountainous the landscape became. OK, that was a long journey. It is uh, well after 10pm. I've been on the road since 10am, so 12 hours, but we are here in Fort William. Got to go and find where I'm going to camp now. Good morning. It is around 6.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. So I arrived at Fort William late last night, about half past 10. Eventually got my tent set up uh, in the football club here at Fort William. And it was a bit colder than I wanted it to be in here. And I'm, I'm gonna have to wear clothes, I think, when I sleep because the sleeping bag is not as warm as I was expecting. My first morning in Fort William was spent meeting my fellow team members and listening to various briefings. Um, then we're going to split into smaller groups, so... The thing with the Lash Runners is that they've potentially spent five or six hours more on the hill again for the third day on the trot. And apparently there is only one efficient way to erect a tent. So it is a hive of activity here at Cape Wrath uh, Ultra HQ. Uh, we have um, the whole of registration getting set up. So uh, runners will come into here. This is where registration is. Uh, these are all the various teams uh, that are doing different things. So we've got like the start finish team uh, over there. We've got the info point team here. Uh, we're the, the main camp team, so this is a few of our crew here. Uh, we're going to be doing registration this afternoon from one o'clock. Once erected, we were also instructed on how to pack a tent away. In 10 days time, I would be a leading expert on tent erection and teardown. So this is the registration tent. We're all set up. Uh, the runners are waiting outside, not all of them, but the first few runners are waiting outside to get registered. So we've got all the numbers here and everything that they need to collect when they come in. Uh, T-shirts, trackers at the end there. And you do need to know that my job this morning has been putting all of these banners up on the, on the stepladder. That was my job. From early afternoon, 2023 Cape Wrath Ultra participants began filing through the registration tent. Look who it is. One one of the race favourites. It's Debbie Martin Corsani. Registration lasted until early evening, with runners arranging their own accommodation for the first night in Fort William. Right, that's it for day one of the Cape Wrath Ultra volunteering experience. Uh, all the runners have arrived and been registered. Uh, no running has happened today. Uh, that starts tomorrow. So I am up at six o'clock in the morning uh, down to the ferry to see the runners off for their first leg tomorrow. I may have been to Tesco to purchase some snacks for this evening. <laughs> So there are two waves of runners who will arrive here in a couple of hours actually we've got quite a while um we've got this uh this signage here cape wrap ultra and then we've got the flags 
here and here, which Pippa and I have put up. The runners' drop bags are in there. And then all the trackers that they need to get are here. So they pick these up, they put them in the top of their bags and they have to carry them with them for the rest of the journey. And that journey starts after a short walk from Race HQ at the football ground through Fort William and then a ferry journey across Loch Linney. So isn't this lovely? This is the first boat leaving for the Cape Wrath Ultra. They're going across the water and to start their adventure. That's fabulous, isn't it? I'm so jealous. Where are you from? America. <laughs> Whereabouts? Washington. Washington, why have you come? Because I've been trying to come run this for three years and I'm finally here. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. It's beautiful here. Good luck. Mohammed, Billy, hi, where That's are you it. from? Hawaii, aloha. Aloha. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a little bit different to the weather in Hawaii. Oh, I thought it was exactly the same. No, way. no, oh. it's very, very different. Oh, yeah. Mohammed, yeah. to me. Sorry, man. Come on. <laughs> There's nothing more beautiful than Scotland. And I'm an O'Sullivan, so wow. I've, I've seen Ireland, so I wanted to come over and but check. Hawaii is beautiful. Hawaii is beautiful. Best weather on the planet, so I figured I'd come check out the worst weather on the planet. Come on. <laughs> and Mohammed, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, why have you decided? decided to come do this race. I want to see Scotland and this is uh, I think the best way to see it. There's probably no better way. Have a great race guys. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Where are you from? Oh, ooh, I'm from the US, but I live in Turkey. You live in Turkey? Interesting. Yes. What's your name? My name is Maria. And Maria, why have you come all the way from Turkey via the US to run in Scotland? Uh, because of the adventure and the, the thrill of the challenge. What have you done similar before? Or have you done anything similar before? Ooh, um, I have done a couple ultra marathons in the US. I actually did one in uh, in the fall in Turkey, in Cappadocia, which was incredible. And so I, you know, just the, the scenery is incredible out there. And from what I've seen here, I'm from Alaska in the US and so like uh, this scenery gives Alaska a run So if it gets money. cold and rains you don't care do you? I'm just gonna build an igloo. Yeah fair enough. <laughs> I'm Anna I'm from uh, I live in Sheffield. In Sheffield okay so not quite as far, not as, quite uh, as, far. as Turkey. I did the Lakeland three day a month ago. I've done the Ring of Steel and well have an absolutely great one. Yeah. <laughs> well done. It's a 37 kilometer run to the first camp at Glenfinnan. No running for us though, once the start area had been packed away, volunteers in the event team climbed into our allotted vehicles for the short drive. Right, here we are at Glenfinnan, which is Camp 2, or Camp 1, I suppose, away from the start. Look, it's the Harry Potter Bridge. That is the, the actual bridge that the train went across in Harry Potter. And this is our operation to get the tents up. There are all these blue Berghouse inflatable tents. Uh, we have to lay them out on the ground and then get pumps and pump up the uh, inflatable arches uh, so the tents go up. You can see we've got about four of them up so far and then we've got all these left to do before the first runners come in. It's now 11, 12, 37. The first runners are probably gonna be in in around about two hours. We rushed to get all the tents up quickly so we could stand and watch the steam train go over the bridge made famous by this scene in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Tourists come to Glenfinnan from all over the world to watch the real thing. After a debrief, I was free for a couple of hours, so I decided it was time for a first dip in a river. We're not going to get much of a chance to do this, so I'm going to go in this water. Do you think so? Oh, it's nice. Now I am fully aware that many of you have no interest in seeing these gratuitous half-naked scenes, so I'll just leave it on screen for a little longer and warn you that there are plenty more swimming scenes to come. So everybody is getting out to see the train and look how, how many people are filming. After watching the steam train for a second time, the rest of the afternoon was spent greeting runners as they finished their first day in the Scottish Highlands. Well done, mate. Good effort today. Thank you. Well done. Okay, so beginning of day three, we're packing away the camp at Glenfinnan. So it's about nine o'clock in the morning. People have been up since 6.30, but my shift doesn't start till nine. So uh, I'm about to go and join in the uh, packing down of the tents and getting all the equipment back in the vans. 
ready to take to our next campsite. All the runners have gone. They're all off on their 50 odd kilometer journey this morning. There were between 24 and 27 tents for our team to pack down each day before moving on to the next camp. And after every session, we would have a debrief meeting with Greg, one of the main URE events coordinators. Some of the catering team to go to bed at seven o'clock because they get up at three o'clock in the morning. So it's just before uh, one o'clock in the afternoon and we've just arrived at the next camp. This is Kinloch Horn and this is completely off grid. So there's no phone signal here. Uh, we are in a valley. There's a beautiful lock there. There's a river running just down here and it is serene and very picturesque. Um, we are gonna put all the tents up for the runners. We're expecting the first runner to arrive in a couple of hours. So we need to be pretty quick getting these tents up. Uh, but yeah, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful location to be in. So every day it's, it's put the tent up, take it down, put the tent up, take it down. And that's your own tent. And then you've got all the runners tents and there are 20 odd runners tents to take up, uh, put down and take up again. Put, take down and take down and put up again. Each day I became more in awe of what a huge logistical operation this whole thing is. During the afternoon, the catering team starts serving chips, soup and very tasty finger bites, which were available to the event team as well as the runners. In fine weather, it was a real joy to stand and welcome the runners back to camp, take them to their tents and get them a big plate of chips. Basically, we're kind of standing here and as runners come in, we're just greeting them and we're taking them over to their tent over there. So kind of a, a greet, a meet and greet escort, not an escort service, like an escort service, but not an escort service. Am I allowed a few more? Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, Robin. Hey. So, hey. missed your cousins. How was it? Challenging. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Sorry, I'm being nice. a complete brick. Uh, this is what it's like when you've run 35 miles in the Scottish Highlands. <laughs> it is 6.30 in the evening, we've still got loads of runners still out there on day number two of the Cape Wrap Ultra. 4 minutes to 10 in the evening and uh, we need runners to appear over there like now because uh, if they don't they're not going to make it in time come on luke hard as you can hard as you can hard as you can come on come on fantastic in you go in you go well done, well done. awesome stuff buddy so we got one of them in there's 50 seconds left but we don't think the others Oh, one is crew, yeah. This is what it looks like as we're collapsing down camp. Pretty much all the tents, just a couple more tents now left to collapse. And then we're on our way to camp number three. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> So every morning, once we've packed all the tents down, uh, the camp team, we get our bags, put them in the cars that we're traveling to the next campsite in, and then uh, we get on our way to today camp three. We're just about to leave camp two. The final thing that the camp team have to do is just a sweep of the area just to make sure there's no litter left. So we're all just walking up and down the field, making sure there's no litter. Uh, I mean, the camp team is only one team here. There's the catering team, tech services team. There are so many different teams. Uh, the, the marquee team, all of these teams have their own separate jobs. And then we'll all make our way to camp three when we're done doing our job. But I'm in the camp team. We've uh, just stopped for coffee on our way up to Camp 3. There's some quite nice little signs in here. <laughs> That'll look good on video. It's so heavy! 
All right, another beautiful camp location. This is camp three and we're setting up tents and I, I've been given strict instructions to pump, so that's what I'm gonna do. Pumping up the tents is the most arduous, back-breaking job you'll do as a member of the main camp team. Why they don't invest in some electric pumps to help is beyond me. Day three at the Cape Wrath Ultra and our first finisher is coming in. So David was the first in yesterday as well. Uh, I would, actually, the last one was quite blowy. Yeah. In fact, both hills were, the weather was good today, but it was a bit windy on top. The last bit was the best bit. The rest was... Grim. Well, it was quite technical. <laughs> I, I thought I, I was told there was a lot of fire track. On. There is a lot of fire track, but all I remember is the technical bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't too bad. I got a bit scared at the top because you can't see and all you're following is a line. And I was like, oh my God, am I going the right way? Yeah, yeah. I'm really not a mountain person. So. Well, you're doing all right for not so a mountain I, person. I think you're miles I ahead. You know, I don't have loads of experience. So. Right, yeah. let's get you to your tent. Yeah, please, don't please. get cold. Come on, go this way. Okay. Well done, well, boys. Well done, guys. Well, 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 guys. You can stop really running there. Oh, yeah. Well done. Yeah. yeah. So when we get a little break, uh, we can uh, go off and do what we like for a bit. We didn't get much of a break yesterday, but today I'm just going to go half an hour run down to the river, following the route that the runners are coming back in on day three. Great work. Good effort, mate. Well done. Do not come and volunteer at the Cape Wrath Ultra if you want to recce the course. You're just not going to have time for that. You have just under a mile to go. Brilliant, well done, good work. Hiya. Uh... Yes, I'm good, I'll be down in a minute. Good work. Thank you. How's your day been? It's, it's been challenging. It's been profoundly beautiful. There is time most days for half an hour or so running on the hills and there is always time to throw yourself in the nearest river. Working on the late shift, the most rewarding time is greeting the runners as they finish their day and seeing the joy and relief on their faces. So there's half an hour to go before cut off here on day three at the Cape Wrath Ultra. Um, let me just show you a little bit around the site if I haven't done this already. So this tent here is the participants tent where they can eat. So tea and coffee for participants and hot and cold water is just here. The most important tent is next after hot and cold water is the catering tent. Today it is curry and rice and then for pudding is uh, roly-poly jam sponge with custard which is awesome and uh, the medical tent is just here as well and uh, oh yeah the most important part of all of course is the start finish line so uh, runners are still coming in here it is 21 28 now so so they come in here at the end of day three they go into this tent here and once in this tent, they'll get their tracker removed. Once you go beyond here, uh, this is front of house, uh, that's back of house. Uh, back there, you'll find the control room, the comms room. Uh, you'll find the catering where they actually cook the food and also where we sleep. Our tents are over there as well. Okay, back in my cozy little tent. <laughs> it is tiny, this tent and it has been quite cold at night some of the nights so I've been waking up at four o'clock in the morning in the freezing cold trying to wrap myself in as many layers as possible. Uh, the final runner came in uh, with nine minutes to spare this evening so off to bed nice and early and uh, we'll be back up in the morning to start it all over again. Okay that's camp three done on to camp four this is a tight turnaround today because the runners haven't got as far to go as they did yesterday so we are uh, on a on a shift to get uh, the camp up at camp five no camp camp four race day five no no race day night five race day four that's it
Welcome to camp four. This is Kinloch Hue and it's a very small site so it's going to be a squeeze to get all the tents on the site and all the vehicles uh, but it's beautiful here absolutely gorgeous and the sun is shining when the rain comes or when the midges are out it's just so depressing but when the sun is shining and there's a bit of a gentle breeze to blow the midges away that's when it's beautiful so it's time for me to turn the camera off and help unload these tents and get them set up So we've built the camp tents and uh, it's now time for us to have a swim. It's like we've got about an hour or so off before we need to go and start meeting runners. So we're just going to go and dip in the water for a minute or two. because it's really freezing cold so it's better to stay in once you're in. <laughs> These are really long working days and I, I, I feel really tired but the thing is, you're just woken, you're made so alive by this water and the sunshine when it comes out. It's absolutely beautiful. Back in camp, the shorter 35 kilometer route meant runners arrived back earlier than usual. The sunshine and small, cozy nature of the site made for a lovely atmosphere on race day four. Great work. It's days like these that runner's envy kicks in and I wish I was out there on the course running. It's a hard life though, standing in the sunshine, eating chips and cheering weary souls across the finish line. Well done you. Oh, that's okay, it was a great day, absolutely fantastic. Enjoyed that? Yeah. Good. I would have not missed it for anything. Right, that was our final runner today. So we are now going to bed or going to eat or don't, going to shower or something anyway. Uh, that is the day done here on day four at the Cape Wrath Ultra. Good morning, welcome to day five at the Cape Wrath Ultra. Um, it is midgy day this morning. We are up early because I've changed shifts. So the first four days I was on late shifts well, we started at nine o'clock in the morning. Today, I'm starting at 6.30 in the morning uh, when the midges are really, really bad. So, midge net is on, gloves are on because it's actually quite cold as well this morning, but it's gonna be a lovely day. Uh, and we are on bag drop and kit check this morning. So the runners will leave around between seven and eight o'clock this morning. So we're gonna check all their kits. Well, not all their kit, we just get check a couple of items of their kit and uh, dump their bags in the vans to take to the next camp. Each day, runners pack their dry bags and deliver them back to us before they start running. There is, of course, a mandatory kit list which runners must adhere to, and we check for three items each morning before giving them the all clear to set off for the day. It's always the, it's always the one at the bottom. Compass, please, when... Yeah. Right, Pippa didn't know Agadu. Pippa didn't know Agadu, did she? Right, so no. she won't know Superman either, will she? Do you remember Superman? No, no. Oh. So good to go. So this is Joe Meek, race leader at the moment, and looking fresh every day. No pressure. No, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> How are you feeling, Joe? Yeah, I'm all right actually. Good. Uh, yeah. Another day. Oh, wait, another day. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Enjoy. See ya. Look, she started running already. <laughs> <laughs> With the runners on their way and the camp dismantled, it was time to get into our vehicles. I was always in MPV 38 with the same gang. Quite often we would stop for coffee on the way up to the next camp and there was always some good banter on the journey. Welcome to Clacken, which is not far from Ullapool. This is camp five. Uh, we are on about day six, but uh, the runners are on race day five. Uh, this is a lovely site that we think might be midgy free. So I've still got my midge net in my pocket just in case, but 
We're in a beautiful valley, hopefully midge free. There's Shane. We're about to set up the tent. Fingers crossed it's going to be a lovely campsite. Runners are doing just over a marathon today, about 27 miles. So it won't be too long before the fastest runners are back. So we need to get this load of tents up and ready in the next hour or so. It's your favourite job, John? Good exercise, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Although still to do. Once we've got all the tents up, we have to carry everybody's drop bag and put it in their tents. Can be a long walk. Wendy, good effort, buddy. Well done, buddy. How was today for you? Oh, fantastic. Enjoyed it? Type of terrain, the flatlander from Texas, you know. That's, uh, I could run today. The bog section still kicked my ass. But... It was a lovely day today, and as in the course, we're just absolutely stuffed. Yeah. It's just a brutal, brutal course. And you've only got, I mean, a really long day tomorrow, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should be no problem at all. Enjoy it, guys. Yeah, too, Bye. <laughs> Hiya. Can I a few closer to my level? Oh, well, yeah, it won't be long now. Well done, guys. Keep it going. So next to our campsite is a beautiful climb and I thought I'd come to the top of it so this is as high as I think I want to get before I go back down. Fantastic view of mountains in the distance there. So we are about 10 miles southwest of Ullapool. So Ullapool is in that direction and the Isle of Skye is in that direction as well. And our campsite is about uh, 400 metres descent down into that field down there, or near that field just down there. I've only run 3.3 kilometres to get here, so 400 metres descent, 3.3 kilometres, so we'll go down in a second. I am loving this, and I can't wait to do the Cape Wrap Ultra next year. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Five thirty in the morning. Still need to be a little bit quiet because people are sleeping. Just got to get up there, have breakfast, and then start taking runners' drop bags off them and sending them on their way for their run today. It's a long one today. Oh yeah, just to make sure I do actually eat. Well, this, you have to, have to prove it to someone else in your family. Do you? I am eating. Oh, boy. Yeah. How about some? Egg. Oh, it's frittata well, today. Oh, today. So we've got potato in there. <laughs> Lovely. Oh my gosh, we're doing commentary. <laughs> I didn't swear. Uh, would you like some sausage? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Would you like two? Because you. I'll go for two. Yes. That's delicious. Good luck, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Go on then, Tara. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been really nice. Yeah, the weather's been brilliant. The views have been really good. What is it? Been awesome. But uh, you're getting up at five thirty in the morning, mate. Yeah, I know. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I, really, I didn't sleep well. That's why I was cold. But. Debs, how's the team performing? Are we any good? No yeah. shit. <laughs> good. Thank you very much. We were so lucky with the weather this year. Apparently, last year it rained every day for the entire event. It was also really nice to be on early shifts, to be able to see the runners off and to have a little extra time in the evenings to enjoy the surroundings. I love the second time, so. 
Right, so we've got uh, Eka and uh, Debbie who are in uh, fourth and fifth place respectively in the women's race. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy it. Uh, day six, this is Joe Meek who's in the lead, setting off on her run. Good luck, Joe. Have a good one today. So, as well as my team taking all the tents down, there are loads of other teams dismantling everything else. So, this is the start finish team, funnily enough, dismantling the start finish area. All the runners have gone. So, that's it from uh, this camp, and we're moving on to the next camp as soon as everything is packed up. It was time to move on from here at Clacken, an hour or so north to Loch Assint, where some of us were about to get a nice surprise. We've looked out because on day six we can stay in a lodge. So uh, the campsite is down there and uh, that's where all the runners are going. But uh, tonight we're staying in here. Great work, buddy. Well done, mate. So we're following the route that the runners are coming in to the finish. So we should see a couple en route. Hi, right, buddy. Good work. Right, leading lady in the Cape Wrath Ultra 2023 is coming to the finish. Well done, Joe. Tough one today again. Good work. Well done, buddy. So Joe's had Joe had a tough day yesterday and she's had a tough day again today, but she's got there and she's still leading lady. Well done, buddy. Are uh, you two looking all right? Well done, guys. How's it going? Feeling good? Yeah, pretty good, yeah. Well done. Good job today. Well done, you two. Made it. Just about 2k, less than 2k to go. 2k to go. See you later. I don't know how far down those caves go. But that's cool. It is almost done, less than 4k to go. Enjoy. See the finish. Oh my goodness. Happy? I'm shocked. I'm so happy. That view. That view. You've got 4k, 4k less. Yeah. My watch is so happy. Same I've only done 60. Four, four, kilometers. four kilometers to the finish. Three kilometers on four. I'm sorry, four. <laughs> and here they come, fourth and fifth place respectively. It's uh, Debbie and Eka. Well done, girls. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Good job. Four kilometers, just over four kilometers left. Smashing it out of the park. Well done. I thought I'd <laughs> Come on. Right, not many people are allowed in here. This is like the secret place that people don't get to come. This is the ops tent. So this is where the, everything happens. So here's Greg, here's Sue, These, they're in charge. We have to bow when we come in here, um, like this. Yeah, I should be on my knees, but um, every, everything that's important happens in this tent. A lot of it can't be revealed. Well done, girls. My heart is rising I'm taking it step by step I'm running and running I'm not slowing down just yet It's the morning of day seven and we do finally have something more akin to what I would think Scottish weather should be like. Agamemnon! <laughs> right, this guy's going to finish today. Agamemnon has been absolutely awesome all week. Uh, you enjoying it? Yes, yes my friend. Yes, my yeah? Friend. You're going to finish today? 
definitely, definitely. Yeah. But we will start on the second half. I will start. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Some so some people are doing still on the full course. Other people have dropped down to what's called the Explorer, which is a slightly shortened version of the Cape Wrath Ultra. So it's about 6.30 in the morning on day seven, and we are by Loch Assint. Loch Assint, something like that. Uh, this is kit check. So that's my job, standing there this morning, uh, waiting for the runners to come and drop their bags off to take it to camp eight. Uh, all the runners are getting themselves prepared. They're all here having their breakfast, washing their cutlery up, and they're all eating in that tent there. And then in about an hour or two's time, all these blue tents will be dismantled by us and taken on to Camp 8. So uh, let's get on with uh, getting these runners off on their next journey, their next adventure. Debs has had a terrible night's sleep. She's <laughs> dribbled tea all down herself. Thanks for that, Steve. She's not, I'm gonna put this in the edit. She's not functioning at all. <laughs> Alice has only <laughs> tea and dribbled down herself. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Maybe that can't make the edit. <laughs> I say fuck a few times, you can't put it in. I either. can't put it in. If you say fuck, I can't put it in. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy it. Good luck, guys. Have fun. In general, runners could start any time after 7am, so everyone. there would often be Enjoy. something of a mass start at 7, with others trickling over the line for the next hour or so. Have a great one. Right, there we go, 7 o'clock. The really faster runners will have to start an hour or so later, and what you find is that they will catch the, uh, these runners up on the way round. You're not going to lose her today, are you? Just tell me how you're feeling on your last big day. Come on. Quite pleased to get it over and done. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Joe. Looking forward to getting this done, Elaine. Yeah. How far are you ahead of third? A couple of hours. Okay, fingers crossed then. Bye, thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Good job. Well last night. Oh, I did, yeah. Okay, this is David Parrish who's in first place in the Cape Wrath Ultra going into day seven. This is the final long day, so uh, David's just got uh, one long day and a short day left to do. And then there's a waterfall which is um, one of the highest you can hit, high speed fall. Yeah, it's oh, wow, that there. Awesome. It's a bit boggy around there. Fernando, can you hold on to second place? Yes. Good. Brilliant, thank you very much. See you, Fernando. And the Greek god, Agamemnon. Ah, lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely weather, lovely event, lovely landscape, lovely people. Perfect. Everything is great. Well, we'll do water proof trousers, gloves, and head torch with spare batteries, please. By now, we were getting pretty experienced at this tent packing business. We naturally divided ourselves into small teams and each of us knew what needed doing to get the tents packed away as quickly and efficiently as possible. However, in the morning we had what was without question the worst weather of the event thus far. You wouldn't believe about two hours ago it was absolutely torrential rain here, pouring and we were in full waterproofs and still getting soaked while putting all those tents up, but the tents are up. The finish gantry is up, we're here in camp seven. One day to go, we're just putting all the bags now into the tents. We are at Kinloch Burvey. Uh, this is Kinloch Burvey Football Club here. We're on their football pitch and they were very keen to stress that they didn't want the football pitch ruined. So we've had to be very careful not to drive trucks on here. We did have one truck go on trying to deliver the toilets and it got stuck. So we've already ruined their football pitch. The rain has stopped. It's almost the sunny afternoon. I've finished work for the day. We are right at the top of Scotland, almost. 
and I'm on my way running to Sandwood Bay which I'm hoping will be beautiful it's about 13 kilometers from uh, our campsite look where we are I know we're on an established path and there is a car park two kilometers away however if we look around there is nothing in sight so there's no electricity pylons no telephone cables and no houses no nothing there is nothing around at all where in the country do you get to see that nothing That's fantastic. absolutely brilliant i can't wait to get to this beach i'm so excited Right, I think we might have to go for a quick dip, even if it's just a couple of minutes or 30 seconds. The runners in the Cape Wrath Ultra do run across this beach, so it's good to come and see it. completely deserted beach, Sandwood Beach, the sun is out, it's completely gorgeous. This is absolutely fantastic. This run and swim was my favourite of the whole trip. Getting to see Sandwood Bay deserted in the sunshine once everyone else had left was very special. It was also my longest run of the week at 25 kilometers. Once back at camp, I slept very well, despite it staying light until well after 11 p.m. This is our winner, unless he does something stupid today. This is David. Here's David's gloves. Here's David's gloves, there's David's waterproof trousers. Waterproof top, David is clear to go and run 16 miles today. <laughs> Pleased with yourself? Pleased with your efforts? I am, yeah, I am. Put myself under pressure at the start by going out fast and now I've been condemned to try and give out beans every day, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. You're good with that. Yeah. You haven't, you, it's, it's great, you haven't suffered any major injuries. Yeah, no major ones. Oh, no. Just the niggles. Yeah. The niggles we've all suffered. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. So we've got our first two runners starting at 7 a.m. and they are the leaders. So we've got Joe Meek for the ladies and uh, David Parrish for the gents. Have a great day, guys. Don't, don't mess this up now, you two, will you? Okay. There they go, they've got about 16 miles to run up to the lighthouse uh, to win the Cape Wrath Ultra today. Well done guys, enjoy your day. Good stuff. Elaine and Fernando, well done. So they're in second place for the men and women, Fernando and Elaine. Apparently we've been brilliant all week. Not you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the video going in. Oh damn, I've got to use that now, haven't I? I actually <laughs> I have to use that. In... Oh, it's been epic. Yeah. yeah. Enjoyed it. Yes, it's been great. You've run every day with uh, Debbie. Was that a decision that you made early on? Uh, I think from day two I tried to ditch her, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Debbie's a legend and uh, yeah, it's been working really well together. So um, yeah, uh, it's been amazing. I've learned so much from her. And you look so comfortable still on day eight. Yeah, body's keeping up well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm recovering well. Yeah. Enjoy it. Have a great Thank final you. day. Well Thank done, Aka. Are you happy, Sarah? Yes. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> You've done really well. Amazing. Yeah. What, what position are you in? You don't care, do you? No, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Happy to be done now? Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, I'll carry that. Um, we need to see waterproofs today, I think. Waterproof jacket, waterproof trousers, and uh, can we see your backpack, please? I'm not joking. <laughs> I think we can see it. It's on the kit list. I'll get that. <laughs> so this is Debbie, who's been running with Acre for the past uh, six, six billion years. <laughs> In fifth place, enjoy your race. Are, are you pleased with yourself? Yeah. Third place? Yeah, yeah it's incredible that my body held up. <laughs> it really has, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm really, really pleased. Well done. Have a great one, Gav. See you later. Well done, Yana. Once all the runners had gone, it was time for one more breakdown and reset of camp. It's hard to adequately portray the scale of the operation that Uri events put on here. It really is a case of erecting a small town every day with housing, catering, medical facilities, plumbing, electricity and Wi-Fi. The only other things runners might possibly want are hot showers. I just find it amazing that this whole setup is built from scratch every day, eight days on the trot. There are two sets of marquees which bunny hop along the route, but other than that, it's all taken down and rebuilt every day. One last time getting in the car and one last time welcoming runners home. On the final day, runners reach Cape Wrath Lighthouse and then have a one hour bus journey and a short ferry ride back before they cross the finishing gantry in camp. There's only a small team sent out to the lighthouse to see the runners over the actual finish line. Love days one to five, <laughs> days six to eight, quite hard. <laughs> yeah! I was incredibly tired by the final day and after finishing my shift I fell asleep in my tent for a couple of hours. Unfortunately, this meant I was quite late going out on my run, but I just had to see one more beach and try to run as far north as I possibly could. So this is Farad Head. I think I pronounced that right, Farad Head. And uh, Bound the Keel Bay. Stunning. Never been this far north before. Absolutely amazing. It was too far to go to the tip of Fairade Head, so I turned off and ran to the nearest town, which is Durness. It was actually quite busy there with lots of camper vans and motorhomes, but it was still fabulous to feel like I was so near the tip of Scotland. Absolutely beautiful beaches here in Durness, aren't there? Gorgeous. How many years have you been doing this now? Uh, fifth edition, first one was in 2016. Probably the smoothest in terms of operation, highest success rate. A, a lot of people have broken. <laughs> 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 Joe Meek has set a new women's course record and I think um, David Parrish was slightly behind. To be honest, everybody who's completed the full course, it's a completely phenomenal achievement. Why should somebody come and do what I've done like a crazy lunatic and spend eight, nine, ten days volunteering for URE events? Car, two simple answers. So first of all, it is just good fun, full stop. We want our crew to be, um, have a great time. So we get lots of agency, responsibility, we let them run the event for us. So it's very fulfilling work. And then anyone who volunteers also gets a race credit equal to that uh, entry fee for that year which to all intents and purposes means you can do the same event for free at any point in the next two calendar years. And actually that credit is transferable against any of our events. So you could come to Cape Wrath to do Dragon's Back, or vice versa. And we have this amazing kind of 
circular economy. People who volunteer one event, they come back and race another, and they volunteer again and they race another event. It's brilliant. And they really hold that ethos and culture of the business organization. And I have eaten more food <laughs> this week than I have eaten in my lifetime. It is really well stocked. You had a good time. I've had a brilliant time. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Would and you recommend the volunteering to someone then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, don't come here thinking you're going to have an easy ride. It's hard work, especially if you're on the team I'm on, the camp team. We build and dismantle 24, 28 tents every day. It's hard work. But, you know, for people who think, well, why should I come and do something for free? Like Shane's just said, you, you are essentially getting paid. I mean, the Cape Wrath, you know, for us normal people who don't earn a ton, it's a lot of money to pay for an eight day event, but we're getting paid essentially that amount for coming to volunteer here. So it's well worth doing and a brilliant event and well organized, Shane. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's lovely to have you here, thanks. Thanks, Shane. The extra perk for runners on the final day was a bar. That's a long queue for beer, isn't it? <laughs>Have you enjoyed it? Uh, it's been fantastic. Just an incredible experience. Um, Where did you come from? Texas. So I heard about this race uh, back at Coastal Challenge. Uh, I was running it with Marcus Scottney and he told me about this epic race across Scotland and uh, figured I'd give it a go and so glad I did. Uh, three years in the making with COVID deferrals and everything. Cape Wrath over and done with. Yes. Eight days of running in the Scottish mountains. Enjoyed it? Uh, yeah, it was amazing. It's a wonderful experience. Um, it's nice. I don't think many people in Scotland have heard of the Cape Wrath Trail. And uh, I don't know that many people here have been on it. Um, so to be part of the race and actually experience the route and its remote and wildness and inaccessibility, it was just, it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's uh, the weather God's delivered. And I don't think I've ever been so proud to be Scottish. It's great to look around and see people that have come so far afield. And yeah, because you're basically a southerner now, aren't you? I do, I do, I'm aware of this now, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it's great to look around and see there's so many people that have come so far and seen how wonderful from Scotland and I really appreciate it. Are you pleased with, uh, I mean, did you come here with any expectations? Are you pleased with what you've achieved? I came here to do my best and I, I can go away knowing that I definitely did. So. And you came fifth? Fifth, yeah. Um, and you basically ran with Acre all the way, didn't you? For seven days solid, yeah. Um, it, it wasn't even planned, I think, on day two that we decided to sit out together and then we realised we were kind of just moving at the same pace and uh, we worked really well together and we kept each other going through some yeah. Some difficult patches, and uh, same, yeah, it was amazing to experience it with her. Oh, so. So She's probably blocked me on everything now to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Debbie Martin Casani, thank you very much. Thank well you. done on your fifth thank place you at Cape Wrath Ultra. Thank Thanks. You. We're packing up and going home. It's the last day. Everybody is thinking about getting on coaches and getting back to normality. Tents. I've got to get those tents down in the next half an hour because I'm <laughs> supposed to be getting on a coach to go home. So this is how to collapse a tent at the uh, Cape Wrath Ultra. They've got air tubes here uh, and the air tubes are controlled by this valve here and you just press the valve and then the tent collapses. There we go. One down, 23 to go. How are you? <laughs> I honestly feel pretty battered but happy. Like that's the main thing. I've, I've... What did you come here? What did you come here to achieve? I came to do as well as possible and definitely done that. I left nothing out there, so can't ask for Because you, you by day five, you were saying, "Gosh, this is hard." Day five was creeping up on you. Six was a nightmare because the the navigational issues with my Garmin catastrophically failing and then day seven was just tough so what's your next day eight you just have to get done so it was really six and seven that yeah. really to do, go to some dark places yeah you you've you've kind of gone beyond like physically and mentally where you know sometimes you've been before haven't you yeah i mean I'm, i haven't done an eight day race before and i haven't really done a continuous race apart from um so 
my body's in a different place. Um, I mean, I can push each day, and luckily the camaraderie in the tents was amazing. So yeah, you had a you, you had a good tent. Quite, quite chipper, it, you know. They make you laugh, um, which has been brilliant. And then, um, yeah, just yeah, it will take some process. Would you recommend anyone come and do this, and why why should they come and do it? I, I would wholly recommend it. I mean, the scenery. The only you can only visit the scenery on foot, and it really is exceptional. The camaraderie and just the yeah, sense yeah. of achievement. You know, A to B races are fantastic for that. So. Joe, first place and yes. course record. Well done. Move, yeah, move. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Right, that's it, that's me done. We're on our way to get the coach to go home, saying goodbye to camp for the last time after, gosh, it seems, seems like forever, but it's been eight days of running for the competitors and about nine days of work for us, but we are now on our way home. Of course, the end of the race did not mean the end of the trip. I was 700 miles from home, and we were about to board a coach for a long journey to Fort William, where I would get the overnight Caledonian sleeper train to London. We're on the way home, we've stopped in Ullapool because it's a very long journey from the top of Scotland at Durness all the way down to Fort William, so it's about a five hour drive in the coach. So we just stopped in Ullapool, which is about halfway down, for ice cream. After a sleepless night on the train, a tube journey across London and a train down to the south coast, I was finally there. Back in Worthing, back at my local train station, Cape Wrath Ultra, 11 days of volunteering is done. If you have been inspired by this, if you think that you would love to volunteer then, go and have a look at the URE events website and sign yourself up for volunteering at either the Cape Wrath Ultra or the uh, Dragon's Back, which is another event they do, or um, the GL3D, the Great Lakes Three Days. All of those will give you fantastic experience volunteering on multi-day events. Uh, it was my first time volunteering at an event like that and uh, yeah, it was tiring, really tiring, but such good fun. And got to see an amazing place in the Highlands of Scotland. Absolutely superb. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll see you on the start line next time. Bye bye.